Hi everyone, welcome to the show. I'm Andrew Knox in for Gordon today. Israeli intelligence believes Tehran is preparing to carry out a major attack in coming days. Defense Minister Yoav Gallant says Israel is ready to respond. Well, the growing tension has the United States deploying an unprecedented array of military assets to the region. Chris Mitchell reports from Jerusalem. U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin ordered the guided missile submarine USS Georgia to the Middle East and told the Abraham Lincoln aircraft carrier to increase its speed to the region. Austin also spoke with Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant, who told IDF recruits that Israel is ready. You should know this, that whoever will harm us in a way that he has not acted in the past is also likely to get hit by us in a way that we have not acted in the past, and the IDF has a significant and strong capability. Alex Trayman of JNS.org tells CBN News if and when Iran and its proxies attack, Israel's response will be robust. I absolutely expect a much more robust Israeli response, uh, both because it's expected that the attack of Iran will be larger than the attack in April, uh, and it will be a coordinated attack, an attack that includes uh, Hezbollah to Israel's north and possibly the Houthis uh, in Yemen towards Israel's south. So this is this is a coordinated attack. Uh, while the United States uh, says that they want to de-escalate tensions in the region, tensions in the region could not be higher. Hamas escalated those tensions when they refused to join negotiations on August 15th that some hoped would lead to a ceasefire. All these tensions come on the eve of Tisha B'Av, one of the most solemn days of the year for the Jewish people. Many fast and remember the calamities that fell on the Jewish people like the destruction of the first and second Jewish temples. So it's a day uh, of, of major Jewish calamity uh, in history, but uh, at the end of times, it's supposed to be that the Tisha B'Av becomes a, a day of joy. And uh, we know that this war started on uh, on Simchat Torah, which is a, a major Jewish holiday. Uh, and uh, our, the enemies of the Jewish people turn this day of joy, the Simchat Torah, into a day of mourning like Tisha B'Av. So hopefully uh, this conflict will be able to turn Tisha B'Av from a day of mourning into a day of joy. On Sunday, the IDF refuted accusations it targeted civilians when it attacked a meeting of Hamas terrorists, including a top Islamic Jihad commander. An area that, according to our intelligence, no women and children were present. You can see in a video published by us today that the compound is still intact and that there is no significant cratering or damage to the main structure of the compound. This pattern of systematic abuse of schools for military activities by Hamas and Islamic Jihad endangers both Gazans and Israeli civilians. It must be condemned by the international community. In the middle of war and turmoil, an encouraging moment for the Jewish state. As the Olympics closed in Paris, Israeli athletes celebrated their best Olympics ever with a total of seven medals. All right, CBN Middle East Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell joins us now. Chris, just a few days ago, we were talking. Iran may have been backing down. Now they're saying a major attack could come within days. What's behind this shift? Well, you know, it all seems to be like these wars are rumors of wars we talked about, Andrew. Every day, like you said, every day or every few days are conflicting reports. One explanation could be the internal battles going on within Iran itself. Apparently, Iran's president saying he wants important to avoid war. Uh, the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, on the other hand, wanting to have a large retaliation. Uh, on the other hand, but they may be counting the cost as well, uh, how to respond to what happened in Tehran without provoking a full-scale war. Also, Hezbollah may want to avoid a full-scale war. But the rhetoric is there right now. Uh, and it could be part of this fog of war as well, Andrew. Nations sending out mixed signals. And sometimes we really don't know what's behind going on behind the scenes. But we do know God does and why it's so important to be praying. Chris, your reporting mentioned the U.S. is bringing in an attack submarine and ordering a battle group to speed up its arrival. What do you make of this military buildup we're seeing? 
Well, Andrew, it's a powerful signal. Very rare to announce the president's whereabouts of a nuclear submarine. We know there's a squadron of F-22s. That's a premier fighter for the Air Force. Two carrier battle groups could be a long have ability to have a long air campaign, and also signaling to Iran and its proxies not to escalate the situation, and that they're there ready to defend Israel. Now, for weeks, this has been pointing to Iran timing this around a major Israeli holiday, which starts today. How are the Israeli people responding to all this? Well, they observe this day by fasting 24 hours, very similar to what they do on Yom Kippur. No food or drink. They read from the Book of Lamentations. Ten synagogues. There'll be a prayer vigil at the Western Wall tonight and reflecting on the calamity, calamities, but also the hope and redemption of building the Third Temple. And also a number of people are praying that this curse would be broken and there'll be mourning that will be turned to rejoicing for the Jewish people and the state of Israel. Chris, just on Friday, you and I talked about the global prayer movement yeah. on Israel's behalf. Tell us about the impact it's having and how people can get involved if they'd like to. Well, since uh, since we talked, Andrew, I've talked to others, and somebody described it sort of like a starter button, but this, this movement is really multiplying itself, indigenous prayer movements, and then being glued together, really uniting a global prayer, for example. One example you can uh, people can get involved in is Hernhut, Germany. They may remember this was a home to the Moravian prayer movement. It lasted 100 years. It's being live-streamed right now. Uh, and really, this is an unprecedented movement, uh, you know, this Paul said the weapons of our warfare are pulling down strongholds. Derek Prince wrote a great book called Shaping History Through Prayer and Fasting, and this prayer can have an impact on what's happening here in the Middle East. Okay, Chris, thank you so much. We always appreciate your reporting from the region.